As the world starts to reopen, many islands in the Caribbean will lead the way in welcoming back American travelers. Let's have a look at some wonderful tropical escapes with our colleagues at Excursionist. Hurricane season in the Caribbean is typically August through um, October. Um, and there are still storms, obviously, in St. Lucia, but it's definitely um, l more protected from, from hurricanes. Um, St. Lucia is an island that, if you see my screen, um, it, it has lots and lots of incredible vegetation, um, rainforests, um, beautiful mountainous scenery. You see the famous pitons here um, and gorgeous beaches. So it's a great island for someone that's looking for that combination of a beach vacation, but a lot of culture, a lot of outdoor adventure, and more than just sort of your flat sort of landscape that you would see in other islands. Um, we work with four properties in St. Lucia. Um, this is a place where you've got um, these famous properties that are up in the mountains, and one of them is called Jade Mountain that I like to point out. This is for those people that want that open air experience. Um, this is a very unique property where you literally have a three wall concept and your room is always open to nature. Um, because you're up in the, in the mountains, the, there actually is really good um, ventilation, but there is um, no air conditioning. Um, but it is a really, really um, unique experience. As you see, you're up in the mountain, in the hills with these incredible views of the, of the pitons. Um, if you're looking for a more traditional beach vacation, they have a sister property down below, which is called Anche Chastanat. Um, that is a more kind of funky, um, very uh, St. Lucian vibe. Um, it's, it's very um, open and, wood and, and sort of open with wood and, and a beautiful property. Um, another property we work with is called The Landings. That's up in the north. So the north of St. Lucia is, is more your entertainment area. Um, it has more nightlife and things to do. Um, this is a beautiful smaller property, um, very kind of Car Caribbean in style, but still very modern. Um, and then the most, I would say, glamorous of the properties in St. Lucia would be Sugar Beach, which is a Viceroy property. It has its own gorgeous beach. Um, it has a variety of different kinds of um, units, including villas uh, with plunge pools, um, very fresh and, and clean vibe, amazing 30 foot 30,000 foot spa. So this is a, a fantastic um, option for someone that's looking for something a little bit more remote, but with fantastic dining um, and uh, incredible adventures um, along the way. Um, so those are sort of the four properties we offer in St. Lucia. In terms of activities, there's a lot actually to do as in, an, in St. Lucia as an island. Um, a lot of cultural activities, um, incredible hiking excursions to waterfalls, um, there's fantastic chocolate estates, so you can do um, a chocolate tasting. Of course, the, um, the normal sort of uh, sailing and other water sports and activities. Um, we have one of the top award-winning chefs in the Caribbean um, here in St. Lucia, and he does a private uh, sailing adventure where you go and catch fish and then actually cook with him, um, which is a really, really unique experience. Um, so this is just, I guess, a great island for someone that wants a little bit of everything. Um, St. Lucia is open. Um, it, the only requirement is that you do have a negative COVID test, um, which you can do um, prior to arrival and bring your test results. Typically, what we're seeing is, tip, is a 72-hour prior uh, negative result in order to enter um, St. Lucia. Um, any quick questions before I move on to Jamaica? Okay. No. Are these um, um, exclusive resort? In, I'm sorry, all inclusive resorts? Most of the properties that we work with are not all inclusives. That okay. said, they do have um, meal plans, so you can add on a meal plan if you know that you're going to have, let's say, you know, every every lunch or every dinner at the property. But most of them are not um, all inclusive. Um, Jamaica, are most of them have restaurants nearby too? Um, they do. So, um, you know, some of them are more remote. So the one that I mentioned, um, Jade Mountain, um, has restaurants nearby um, and, and also even, even the landing. So St. Lucia has some great um, dining. Um, so it's a, great, it's a great option for someone who wants to do both kind of eating at the resort and also kind of going out to dinner um, in Castries or Sufri's. So there is a lot of dining. It's a very safe island, um, very, you know, kind of a, a, 
a little bit of, 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 of you know, for everyone in, in, in St. Lucia. Um, the next island I want to talk about is Jamaica. Um, Jamaica is my favorite island in the Caribbean. Um, the reason I would say for that is that although all of these are their own countries, Jamaica is a quite large island and it's, it's a country. It, it has many different landscapes, geographies, um, cities, and you know, you can do a multi-sector trip in Jamaica and not get bored um, for, for a long period of time. Um, the key areas that we work in are Negril, um, Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, and then of course Kingston. Um, a lot of the flights are through Montego Bay, and I know that they're in the past. I don't know what is going on now with, with um, obviously post-COVID, but there were direct flights some days of the week from Detroit, I believe, to Montego Bay. Um, the, the, you know, people ask whether Jamaica is, is safe, um, and, and I spent a long time in Jamaica with, with my guides. And what I, I like to say is if you are with a local guide, you are absolutely safe. I went to Kingston. Um, at night, I went all over Jamaica with my guide, and I never felt a tiny bit uncomfortable. It's not an island, it's not a country where I would recommend, you know, grabbing a rental car and just driving all around on your own. Um, but as long as you're with a local guide, it is absolutely a, a safe place to be. Um, and what is really the most unique about Jamaica is the culture. It has a fantastic music culture, an incredible food culture, um, history. Um, there's so much to do and, and to see. Um, but it is a very, I would say, barefoot luxury destination. It's not um, sort of a destination that's focused on fancy, you know, getting dressed up and, and having everything perfectly handed to you. And people are laid back and, and the luxury level is a laid back luxury. It's, it's sort of a, a bohemian um, level of luxury. Um, we work with a number of different properties in Jamaica. The two that I, just because of time, want to point out um, are Goldeneye. So this is the original property where Ian Fleming wrote uh, the James Bond uh, books. And um, the, the, his villa is here on this um, private estate at Goldeneye. Um, so it's a gorgeous property. It's on its own little tiny island. Um, it has incredible views. It is very isolated. So you, know, you asked about dining. Once you're here, you're kind of here. You can go out to dinner in, in Ocho Rios, but it, you're really meant to stay here and, and relax. And they have these incredible houses right on the wall, like on the beach, and they have these little bungalows um, that, are, that are on this canal. And it's just an incredibly beautiful, relaxed, chill vibe, great spa, um, you know, great vibe kind of place for, for relaxation. But again, much more barefoot luxury um, than maybe some of the properties we've just talked about in St. Lucia. The other property I kind of want to mention is Round Hill. This is a little bit more of a formal property, but still very relaxed. Um, this property is where um, uh, we several kind of celebrities have homes right next door. Um, Ralph Lauren has a house on the property. Um, it's very kind of isolated at its own yeah. cove, and it's com it comprises of a lot of beautiful villas. So every villa is owned by its own owner and looks different. Um, so when you are working with us, you know, we, we'll send you pictures of the specific villa or the specific room so you know kind of where you're staying. But it has incredible um, water and beach and uh, it's a really beautiful property. Um, but there is so much to do in Jamaica. And I think, again, uh, like St. Lucia, this is a, 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 an island that you go to if you want to really do activities and, and, and culture. So you can go um, horseback riding in the ocean. Um, the Blue Mountains are an incredible place for some of the most expensive and fantastic coffee in the world, of course. Um, we have connections to Bob Marley's family. So if you're into uh, you know, reggae, there is so much to do in terms of learning about the history of Bob Marley. Um, there's incredible historical villages and, and plantation homes. Um, there's an incredible food culture, and we teach people how to make uh, jerk chicken in a, in a jerk chicken making class. Um, there's a great birding if you're a birder, some of the most beautiful birds um, in the world here. Um, of course, if you're interested in music or nightlife, uh, fishing, um, there's just a lot to do in Jamaica, rum tasting. So it, it is a destination, I would say, if you're just going somewhere to lay on the beach, I'd focus on the Bahamas or Turks and Caicos um, or Anguilla. But if you want, you know, activities and culture, 
authenticity, you're going to get it in, in Jamaica. Um, the next island I'll talk about sort of moving into, you know, we, I just mentioned Turks and Caicos. So I'll, I'll quickly talk a little bit about Turks and Caicos. Um, Turks and Caicos, completely different vibe from St. Lucia and Jamaica. Um, much more, this is the western side of the Caribbean, much closer to, um, to Florida and obviously the, the east coast. Um, very, very much flat um, with beautiful, unbelievably gorgeous blue water. Um, so this is a place you go to really relax. There's definitely things that you can do, but most people come here and they just enjoy it. Um, the, the main island that um, most flights go into is Providencialis. Um, most people are not going to other islands and most of everything there is to do is on Providencialis. Um, Grace Bay is the famous beach where if you wanna have dinner or you wanna have a drink or you wanna do something, um, you can go to Grace Bay. But this is, it's such a laid back island, you know, it's very safe, it's very relaxed, and, and it's just sort of, you know, do your own thing and, and chill kind of place. Um, we work with four different properties here, and they're all extremely different. Um, probably the most um, top end is Amanyara. Um, it is one of the Amman properties, and it is absolutely stunning. The architecture, the lighting, the way that everything looks is just stunning. Um, a lot of celebrities have private villas here at Amanyara. Um, you have your own, there's no big building. Everybody has their own pavilion. So either you're right on the beach or you're on your, you have your own, your own pool. It's not just a plunge pool, it's a big pool. Um, or you have your own lagoon. But each of these are absolutely gorgeous um, and they're very, very private. So this is a place to just completely escape, have unbelievable, you know, snorkeling adventures, scuba diving adventures, um, sailing adventures and, and just kind of relax. Um, the other property that's, that stands out is Como. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Or did someone ask a question? No, okay. I think that um, was just a cough. Okay. I think that was coughing, yeah. <laughs> um, the other property that I, I like to highlight is completely the opposite is Como um, Parakee. Um, this is one of the Como properties like Como Shambhala. It's very zen, um, it's on its own private island. So getting there, you take a little speedboat. Once you're there, you, you don't leave. Um, it's very uh, laid back kind of um, woods and, and sort of very sort of eco chic. Um, great spa program. I would say some of the best food I've ever tasted um, in the islands and a, a great place. But, but again, very, very, very isolated. Um, if you don't wanna be as isolated, we have two properties, the Palms and the Waimara Resort. The Palms is more of a traditional um, Caribbean, a little more formal property, as you see. Um, this property is on the main beach called Grace Bay. So this is for someone that may wanna just walk outside of the property and go for a walk, go to a restaurant, go to a bar, um, and, and have a little bit more uh, you know, things going on at night if they want, um, but still really a gorgeous, gorgeous property. And then Waimara is probably the most sort of um, lifestyle property. It's got the, all the white and it's got the DJ playing at the pool. So it's definitely more for that, you know, kind of nightlife and, and, and fun vibe, um, uh, you know, if you're looking for that. So those are our four properties in Turks and Caicos. Um, you can get to Turks and Caicos very easily from Florida um, from, and then from a number of other, you know, main cities in the United States. Um, easy to get to. Most of the properties are 20 minutes from the airport. Um, if you are looking for some cultural stuff, we can definitely do a food tour. We can do an island adventure, um, lots of, you know, some horseback riding, a lot of scuba diving. But in general, it's definitely more of a relax and be um, chill kind of island. Um, another island that I, another place I want to talk to is Puerto Rico. So I know there were some questions about Puerto Rico. Um, I did want to mention that Turks and Caicos is opening um, as of in July and Turks and Caicos um, will also require um, a, a COVID test um, and Jamaica also does require a COVID test. A place that does not require a COVID test is one of um, our territories of the United States, obviously, Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico is now, has now lifted its quarantine um, so um, as of July, you'll be able to go to Puerto Rico without um, any kind of restrictions. 
Um, obviously, you're not leaving the United States, so that's nice. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I'd mentioned that the thing about Puerto Rico is that, um, you know, they, they certainly have had some issues with hurricanes and other problems recently. Um, we have been back since. Um, the, the island is back to normal. The beaches are back to normal. Um, and we are, you know, we feel like it's a great, the properties that we're working with are looking great and are, um, we'll be accepting guests um, later in the year. They're, they're just reopening. Um, but definitely the nice thing about Puerto Rico is you have some beautiful beaches, but you also have some incredible nightlife, food, um, and, and, and culture in, in San Juan. Obviously one of the oldest cities in the Caribbean with an incredible history. Um, our properties, we have one property that's in San Juan. Um, it is not really a beach property, but it is a great property if you're not so worried about beach and more worried about experiencing San Juan. It, it does have a tiny bit of, of water, but it really isn't a beach property, but it is a very nice property to the Condado Vanderbilt. Um, and that is in town um, on the Condado Beach. Um, and then the two properties that are out of town are the Ritz-Carlton Reserve and the St. Regis. And both of those are stunning properties. Um, one is about 45 minutes in one direction and the other is about an hour in the other direction. Um, they both have both rooms and villas um, and they're very, both very beautiful modern properties. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not gonna get into all the differences between them but um, they certainly are great properties for a, a, winter, a winter vacation or even you know, a trip this summer. I, I will note that you know, I'm in Florida. The, the, the weather here in Florida is very similar to much of the Caribbean, especially the, the, the Western Caribbean islands. And you know, we have days and days and days of beautiful sunshine and really warm water in the summer. Um, when we get rainstorms typically in the afternoons. Um, but if you're going to one of these islands in the summer and you haven't been able to go and relax all, of, all year because of COVID, um, there's, you're gonna get great beach time. You're gonna get really warm water and you know, you'll get a little bit of rain. But um, as long as you're there long enough, you're not gonna have days and days of rain. Um, as you get into the you know, August, um, September timeframe, um, you are going to get much more of a possibility of hurricanes and, and much more serious uh, weather situations. So if you're looking to go kind of in that September, October period, um, probably better to go to the Eastern Caribbean where you have less likelihood of, of hurricanes. Um, I know we're about at 525, Kareem, so um, we don't have time to talk about every island. I will tell you that um, you can go to our website at www.excursionist.com and you can sort of explore uh, the different islands uh, yourselves. Um, another to point out is Barbados, a um, very cultural place. It is also reopening in two weeks, um, very similar to St. Lucia and Jamaica and having a lot of culture and some really, really beautiful resorts also in the Eastern part of the Caribbean. And then another island that's not talked about a lot is Grenada. Um, it's a smaller island in the Eastern Caribbean. It has a new property um, that we absolutely love called Silver Sands. It's gorgeous and brand new, uh, just opened last year. Very, very modern if you're looking for that modern property. Um, and it's a very safe island, um, very relaxed, but it also have that, has that sort of mountainous um, you know, look to it that the Eastern Caribbean has. And you can combine Grenada, Barbados, and St. Lucia if you want to jump around a, um, among several islands um, as well. So I'll open it up to some questions. And then if, if you have, you know, people want me to talk about other islands, I can as well. Hi, Norman. I have a quick question. Hello. Hi. My uncle Fritz and I are just wondering what you would consider to be the best value for a luxury vacation in the Caribbean, taking into consideration like being able to do all the activities and have a mix of culture and relaxation at the hotel. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, everyone right now is, is looking for, there, there's a lot of opportunities for deals. I think everyone is definitely open to it. Um, I would say that if you're thinking about specifically islands, um, Jamaica, uh, if you are open to, you know, more laid back kind of luxury, that there's a lot of good, good value there and there's a lot to do. Um, Puerto Rico, because it's in the, you know, it's a U.S. territory, it's in the U.S., 
um, and they're very much looking for, for business. There's some great deals at the St. Regis and the Ritz Carlton. Um, so those two are really, really great. Um, I would say it, Turks and Caicos is, is on the opposite end. Um, it's a gorgeous island, but it is very expensive, both the properties, but even just food um, is, is quite expensive in, in Turks and Caicos. So I, I absolutely love it, but it definitely is a, a, a less affordable island um, overall. Thank you. Yeah. What's the easiest island to get to? Um, it really depends on where you're, go you're coming from. Um, I, you know, again, I haven't looked at Detroit's, you know, lift uh, this, this year. Um, I know that um, there was, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kareem, there were direct flights to Jamaica last year. Um, yeah, I can speak to it a bit, Norman, because it, it still is very much a, a moving target, but in season, so starting mid to late fall, like November up until February, March, you're going to have direct flights to Jamaica um, and to Puerto Rico. But with the other islands, it's um, very much fluid, even when we didn't have this situation. So I'd say count on a connection for the most part for many of these islands, either through Miami or through Atlanta. Uh, but for Jamaica, Bahamas, Puerto Rico, most likely there will still be direct service uh, going forward, even during this crisis. I mean, definitely um, in terms of kind of getting places and getting to where you want to go, um, I haven't talked about it and we, we do work with them time to time. Like St. Bart's is very hard to get to um, because of having to take multiple flights. There's no direct flights into, into St. Bart's from, uh, because of the small prop planes that fly there. Um, Anguilla can be difficult to get to. Um, also um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines you're typically taking several flights, um, but you know uh, there's so much lift through Miami and Atlanta uh, to most of these other places that it's pretty easy um, to get to get between them. Um, I will put a plug in for for Miami, my hometown. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people just pass through, and what they don't you know realize is obviously, again, we're dealing with COVID right now. But fingers crossed, by the time you guys are ready to go. In the winter, um, obviously Miami has so much now to do um, between an incredible food scene, um, fantastic properties that are right on the beach, and then some, some you know, incredible art galleries, um, you know, a whole new design district, and also the, the graffiti art district that it, it sometimes is, you know, people haven't been here in a while and they, they don't realize that there is so much to do. So if you are, you know, connecting anyway, and you have to connect anyway, I always put a plug in, you know, spend a couple of nights in Miami, go, in, and it doesn't have, you can spend your beach time if you want in, uh, in the Caribbean, but, but don't, don't miss out on, you know, amazing food, amazing culture, amazing um, museums, and, and a lot of other things to do here um, on, on your way. Um, and don't, you know, rule out a, a two sector trip. Um, I know people think about the Caribbean as being, you know, fly and flop as they say, but you know, even as Kareem mentioned, you know, once the flight schedules get back, you know, you can fly um, between some of the islands in, with smaller regional, um, you know, planes. So for example, you know, if you fly to Puerto Rico and then go from Puerto Rico to Jamaica and then go back, you can't do that. You know, there are multiple islands that you can connect and we can help you with that. So, you know, getting a kind of two island feel for, for a trip and making it a longer trip is always, um, is always something I recommend. Um, or at least, you know, staying at two different properties in a place like Jamaica so you get a different feel of different geographies is, is also something to consider um, in places like that. Yeah. So Norman, one final question, because we do want to, you know, finish up on time. And Definitely. if there are further questions, you can contact me and I'll get them answered for you, certainly but we didn't talk about the Bahamas, partially my fault because I said, let's focus on other islands other than the Bahamas. But could you quickly uh, talk about Ocean Club and maybe Atlantis and kind of what's the vibe there in the Bahamas right now and just touch on those uh, properties very peripherally? Absolutely. So the Bahamas are actually open as of July 1st and um, you know, are, do not have restrictions, which is great. Um, the Ocean Club um, is open um, already. So I would say if you're looking for something soon, 
Um, I would highly recommend it. The Bahamas has a lot, many, many, many islands. Um, the one that, of course, everyone knows is, is, is New Providence, which is, the, which is where NASA is. Um, and New Providence is um, the island that I would say gives you the most to do in terms of um, activities. Um, we love the Four Seasons. So that's the, it's the former one and only, and now it's the Four Seasons Ocean Club. It's on Paradise Island, which is this um, little island that's connected with a bridge um, from the main, main island of New Providence. What's great about Paradise Island is it's very secluded, but at the same time, you're 30 minutes from the airport and you're very close to a lot of things. The great thing about, the, about this island and Nassau and the Bahamas is there is a lot to do while still relaxing. So um, you can stay at the Ocean Club and then you have privileges to go to Atlantis from there. Um, and the great thing about that is that if you have a family and you um, want to go to Atlantis and use the slides, you can. If you, you want to go gambling, you can go to Atlantis and go gambling. And then if you want to go to the mainland of New Providence, there's a whole new community called Bahamar, which has nightclubs and a casino and a lot of amazing restaurants that are um, brought in from all over the world. So you've got a lot to do in, in, in this area, but you have an amazing secluded property at the Four Seasons. And it has all sorts of different accommodations, everything from villas with their own pools to you know, beautiful beachfront rooms. Um, it has a golf course, it has a beautiful spa. Um, they have been open even while the airports have been closed for um, guests who are, who are staying on the islands. So they've been really focused on COVID safety. Um, they're, they've done a really good job in that. And um, if you're looking for a summer getaway um, soon, it's one of the places I'd say that's ready for guests um, immediately, but obviously also think about it for your festive holiday as well. Great. Super. Thank you, Norman. So uh, I think just to respect everyone's time and to keep us on schedule, we will bid all of you a fond farewell and thank you for joining us this afternoon. And, and Norman, thanks for doing this again with us, taking us to another part of the country. And again, if you have further questions, please send them to me. We'll get them answered for you. But otherwise, please stay safe and healthy. And hopefully, we'll all be traveling again soon.